students. Um, thank you for joining us on this beautiful spring day. Um, my name is Maria Toyota. I'm an associate professor and chair of the political science department here at Villanova. And we are so very pleased today to host the Honorable Ambassador from uh, Japan to the United States, uh, the Honorable Ichiro Fujisaki. We are uh, fortunate to have him here during an especially busy time. It's the end of the fiscal year, the beginning of a new year in, in the Japanese calendar. Um, and it's, it's also a busy time dealing with some of the most consequential issues to have arisen in U.S.-Japan relations in many years. Uh, last August, there was an historic change in government uh, with the Democratic Party of Japan taking power for the first time. And inevitably, that power shift has challenged the traditional means of communication, mutual policy making, and cooperation between our two great nations. And not least of the issues, which I hope the ambassador will remark upon today, is the negotiation over the fate of the Futenma base in Okinawa, and as well as the uh, global pursuit of free trade agreements and regimes, and the challenges and the opportunities that come with the rise of China. Uh, Japan and we are very fortunate to have Ambassador Fujisaki as his plenipotentiary. Um, his deep understanding of American culture comes from years of schooling in this country, first as a junior high schooler in Seattle, and then uh, years uh, later as a visiting graduate student at both uh, Brown University and Stanford University. His uh, overseas diplomatic career ranges from posts at the uh, OECD and as ambassador to the United Nations and the World Trade Organization. We're fortunate that his diplomatic efforts and interests extend to the world of academia. He seems to want some, to, to set some sort of world record in visiting as many American universities as possible during his ambassadorial term. And we are very happy that he has deemed Villanova worthy of being included on his scorecard. So Ambassador, we look forward to your remarks. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being here with me. I think this is the uh, last endurance before the Easter holidays for you. And uh, 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 I was due to come in February, uh, but uh, because uh, of snow, I had to cancel this meeting and uh, uh, go back to uh, uh, Washington. Uh, uh, just uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Toyota was uh, saying uh, uh, we could talk about uh, U.S.-Japan relations, but uh, I think uh, I'd li like to leave it to question and answer session, and uh, like to give you uh, talk talk about the uh, little basics beforehand. And uh, before coming here, I asked uh, Mrs. Toyota uh, what's her major, and she said that she's teaching Japanese politics. So I said I'd like to learn from her what's going to happen in Japan. So, uh, maybe she could uh, compliment me. Now, uh, as for Japan, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, just the uh, day before yesterday, uh, our foreign minister was in Washington and he met Secretary Gates and then both uh, the Foreign Minister and I went to Ottawa and met uh, Secretary Clinton there, and I came back from there uh, yesterday. Uh, we are having uh, uh, many discussions, but uh, before going there to talk about that, I'd like to uh, give you some materials. Uh, would you please, uh, people, pass this on so that uh, uh, this, excuse me.
this is a basic uh, knowledge about Japan. Many of you may think you know, which I'm sure that you don't. So I, let me go over this for five or ten minutes. And please don't think that I'm just doing this to students. I've done to uh, senators, uh, secretaries, and I always do this. Uh, uh, and uh, I think I can do that in five to seven minutes. Please look at where we are in the world, this uh, long page, sheet of paper. Chart one says energy self-sufficiency rate and food self-sufficiency rate. Red bars signify energy. Blue bars signify food. Japan is a small country, so we have our food self-sufficiency rate is 40%, energy is 4%. Even adding nuclear, it goes up to 14%. So you would see uh, that Japan is not uh, rich with uh, natural resources compared to US, UK, Germany, or France. Average Japanese farm is less than 10% of average European farm. It's less than 1% of average American farm. The reason is Japan is size of California, 80% of that is mountain, and we have population, 40% population of United States. So it's a crowded country. But uh, with the effort of uh, Japanese industry, if you look at chart two, we are number two in GDP still. Being uh, caught up by China, I think we'll be number three soon, but uh, we'll be, we are still number two, uh, next only to United States. But uh, GDP per capita per person we are in the range of Europe or United States, uh, rather different from other uh, developing countries. With that uh, asset, what are we doing in the world? UN contribution is child three red bars. We are next to United States. Our contribution is uh, about the size of uh, UK, France, Russia, China added. Blue bars are uh, official development assistance. The red and blue bars are uh, unit are different, yeah, so don't compare red and blue, but uh, compare red and red, blue and blue. If you look at this, you will know that uh, if in 10 years accumulation, our ODA is number two in the world. It's not anymore. Four, US trade deficit and foreign direct investment. This shows our relations. Some 15 years ago, 70% of US trade deficit was coming from Japan. Now it's down to 10%. Why? because we are investing in this country. All the companies, Toyota or Honda, are making cars, so electronics companies are making uh, their products here and uh, creating 600,000 jobs directly, and if you include indirect, much more. So the pattern Japan has is similar to Germany, or, and uh, it's very different from countries like China which is just exporting and not investing. Uh, but uh, we are not only num uh, so we are number two to UK in investing, but we are not only number two country in uh, terms of uh, energy efficiency. We are number one for the last 25 years. In order to produce a dollar of GDP, if Japan needed one unit, U.S. needs twice, all Europe needs twice, Russia needs 19 times, China needs 12 times to 
carbon emissions or energy. As a result, if you look at 2007 CO2 emissions, China is number one country in emission, US is number two, Russia number three, India number four, and uh, GDP wise number two country Japan is number fifth. So uh, Japan is contributing in a way not to uh, 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 make emissions in the world. Now, uh, and on top of that, Japan is proposing, if you look at seven Hatoyama Initiative, a 25% cut from 1990 by 2020. That's a huge cut because uh, you, what U.S. is now trying at is 17% cut from 2005 level, which is equivalent to 4% cut from 1990 level. So about six times cut we are trying to propose. Of course, uh, in the condition that others will do, but this is uh, with the belief that the initial investment into this energy efficiency may help pay off in the later stage. That is Japanese experience, having had energy shocks in 1970s, and uh, all shocks, and uh, we have overcome that, and as a result, we made present economy, so we, it's uh, better to put up this high objective target. However, th in Japan as well, some, many industries think this is too ambitious and think that uh, we will lose ground from putting such a high target. So it's controversial, but the present government is trying to work on that. If you look at these blue horizontal bars, you would know that uh, in I as IEA, International Energy Agency members, US and Japan, a special position in energy sector research and development. Japan occupies about 30% of R&D spending, US 28%. So two countries added 60% of world energy research and development is done by these two countries. If you turn the page quickly, I'll go on to uh, innovation. As uh, in innovation is difficult to uh, compare, but uh, if you look at uh, patent application to international organization, US is by far the number one, but Japan comes number two, Germany comes number three. And gross domestic expenditure on research and development, this is not only energy, but a whole uh, domestic expenditures on research and development. U.S. is by far the number one. Japan is number two. So you would know that uh, in that area as well, uh, Japan is uh, following the United States. Now, uh, lastly, possible areas of cooperation between U.S. and Japan. Three charts are there. Japan, this is, first one is agriculture. Japan is the largest overseas market for U.S. agricultural products, only after NAFTA countries, that is Canada and Mexico. So if you look at this uh, chart, uh, import from U.S. Uh, in the Japanese uh, total import, United States is, share is 33%, is number one country. For U.S. export to Japan, you, in the U.S. export to Japan, uh, U.S. export, I'm sorry, U.S. export, Japan's share is 11% uh, and number three after Canada and Mexico. But if you take some of the products like corn, wheat, tobacco, soybean, or pork, 
99% of Japanese corn is from the United States. 61% of wheat is from the United States. Tobacco, 49%. Soybean, 72%. Pork, 41%. And in U.S. export, if you look corn, 29% of U.S. export is to Japan. Wheat, 14%. 29% of tobacco, soybean, 9%. Pork, 36%. So in agriculture, Japan is the number one market in many areas for the United States. Second, uh, totally different subject, high-speed railway. Because Obama, President Obama is interested in high-speed railway and uh, uh, just want to give you a comp uh, Japan is so much interested in cooperating with the United States. And there are other countries who would like to cooperate with the United States. So I'll just show you. Uh, where the major countries are. Japan, France, Germany, UK, and China. Uh, Japanese railway, high-speed railway started in 64. France, 81. Germany, 88. UK, 2003. China, 2007. System length, the root miles, is uh, Japan's is the largest, uh, 1,360. And uh, next comes France, Germany. <coughs> Top operating speed, France is number one, and uh, others are about the same. Ridership, how many millions of people are riding? Japan is by far the number one. But uh, two features I would like, three features I would like to say is that uh, Japan is an earthquake country. So Japanese railways are uh, designed uh, to meet earthquakes. That is, if there's any seismic wave, a Japanese uh, high-speed railway would stop right away. Second, uh, from 1964, there's no death toll, no mortal accident. In some other countries, I have, but uh, I'm a diplomat, so I would not refer to any of them. Uh, Lastly, President Obama, I think, is uh, interested in nuclear power plant. Japan is uh, interested in cooperating. Uh, Japanese companies uh, have uh, relations with uh, U.S. companies, uh, GE, Westinghouse, and uh, you know that world nuclear power plants, U.S. is number one country still has uh, 104 nuclear power plant. France is number two, Japan number three. But number of plants constructed or established in last 30 years, after three months, US was not able to make any. France, 21, Japan, 29, and uh, other countries are making. So uh, that is one of the reasons that uh, countries are interested, especially France or Japan, is interested in cooperating with the United States. This is a quick view of uh, where the US and Japan is <coughs> in figures. I would like, if you look at, could take a look at this uh, uh, map. I would not go into detail, but uh, three countries, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Pakistan, which are the sort of focal point now in the world. <coughs> US is the number one contribute, contributor for uh, reconstruction of those countries, but number two are Japan, both uh, in three countries, all of them, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Pakistan. Uh, Afghanistan, uh, we have uh, just committed $5 billion. That was when, just before President Obama came to Japan in November. Uh, in Iraq, uh, uh, we have already spent $5 billion. Pakistan, we have just pledged uh, uh, last year with the United States, one billion, and uh, uh, we are uh, working 
for reconstruction. We are not uh, sending any troops there, but uh, uh, Japan, Japan has uh, sent troops uh, before to Iraq and to Indian Ocean, but now we are concentrating on this uh, civilian side. This is uh, where, where Japan's cooperation with the United States is now. I, I would like to just mention that uh, in today's world, I think there are three big issues we are facing. One is uh, nuclear proliferation and terrorism, the combination. We see suicide bombing uh, so often, but uh, if we haven't seen so much combination of uh, nuclear bomb with terrorism, luckily, up until now, because it was, uh, we have a nu nuclear non-proliferation treaty, and IAEA surveillance is there. However, several countries are trying to uh, go in the back of international organizations. North Korea has had a nuclear uh, uh, experiment in August 2006 and May 2009. Iran is trying to go through uh, uranium en enrichment. And this is a very serious issue, not only for the Middle East peace, but also if countries start possessing this weapon and could be uh, could attack other countries or such kind of uh, terrorism could uh, suicidal thing could uh, be induced. What uh, we have to go through now is to try to use international organizations like United Nations be uh, and it has merit and it has problem as well. The merit is if once uh, UN <laughs> Uh, sanction or UN uh, agreement is there, it would become, if it's a UN Security Council resolution, it would become compulsory. And uh, it'll become difficult for countries to go around it. But uh, uh, difficulty is that it's difficult to get consensus of all the countries of Security Council and especially five countries, permanent members, US, France, UK, Russia and China has veto. And Russia and China is always rather reluctant to use these sanctions. Uh, so we have to <coughs> find the right balance, uh, try to uh, use uh, UN as much as possible, try to persuade these countries to come along. This is the very difficult issue. And uh, also, in dealing with this, uh, uh, these countries, me meaning not China and Iran, but uh, China, China or uh, Russia, but Iran or North Korea, negotiations can be very tough. They think they are there forever, like Kim Jong-il or uh, Iranian uh, leaders. And uh, the democratic countries' leaders change every four, eight years or eight years, so they think time is on their side. And how to change that psychology is the key in diplomacy. Second challenge is the uh, emerging countries, economies. Japan was one of that 30 years ago. There's a st story in Japan that uh, one day Buddha was strolling in the heaven and looked down upon the hell and there was a criminal being tortured and he, uh, Buddha thought a pity and uh, put down a spider thread and the uh, criminal caught it and uh, uh, climbed up the thread and thought he was saved. Halfway, he looked down, and there was thousands of people coming up the thread. So he was afraid that uh, the thread would be uh, would not hold. So he shouted, "Hey, don't come up!" And uh, with that, thread was cut off, and everyone fell. 
Why I say this is that uh, I'm not saying this is heaven and what is hell, but uh, everyone wants to climb up, and it's not diff possible to stop it. It people will climb up. Some 30 years ago, or 25 years ago, in France, trade minister thought uh, uh, Japanese uh, products were flooding the country, and uh, she said. Only port that could uh, get through Japanese products would be a little town of Poitiers. It's like saying to Chinese in the United States, all the Chinese products have to come through South Dakota or something like that, in inland. Uh, I mean, uh, that was not possible because uh, then the Japanese companies went to UK, produced uh, products, and uh, came into France. This would happen inevitably, but the magnitude, the difference is that uh, when it happened uh, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, it was just one country, Japan. Now it's more than half the population of the world is producing this, China, India, and it, it'll be a huge change in world industrial market. What you have to do is three things. One, you go up the ladder faster, industrial uh, pyramid or ladder, and make your product more competitive, more attractive. That's one. Second is try to ask those countries coming into the market to abide by to rules and norms of international organizations like World Trade Organization or patent <coughs> and, and not try to uh, imitate uh, and also maybe uh, currency as well. Uh, lastly, uh, uh, fortify uh, relations with uh, like-minded countries. It's uh, fashionable to uh, get rid of uh, G8 and go to G20 or new organizations, but always uh, discussions among like-minded countries have helped as well. Last uh, challenge that uh, we are facing is uh, how to deal with market economy. Globalization have uh, uh, in a way, ask for de-restriction, deregulation. In order to compete with other countries, you have to deregulate your uh, economy. However, as a result, that would produce more haves, and the difference between haves and have-nots or discrepancy will be, become bigger. And what we are seeing in the world today is that if there are usually more, I don't say loser, but uh, the, the, they haven't, those people who have not succeeded than those people who have succeeded, who they think, so there's a mounting frustration all over the world, including the United States, but uh, more so in other countries. That has brought change in many political system, political, not system, but political uh, elections and results. And uh, uh, people are trying to introduce <coughs> more regulation rules now in banking and in other areas. You have to strike a right balance here. If you regulate too much, it'll suffocate your economy. So this is the question that all the countries are now facing. I think these are the three main issues facing us now in security area, with emerging economies, and how in your country uh, deal with the, this uh, economic situation. Japan and US here have uh, rather similar uh, fate because uh, our as you have seen in my first chart, our economies are very much tied, and we are in a similar situation. 
We are number one, number two economy still. Security-wise, we have 50 years of uh, security arrangements, and uh, we have some special relations. Although, of course, uh, we are discussing basing issue. If you have any question, uh, I'd love to answer. But uh, still, uh, both of con both countries uh, deem that our security ties is the linchpin or cornerstone of uh, peace and security in the Pacific region. Thirdly, value. We value both human rights, democracy, free election, freedom of speech. We don't have any censorship of Google or whatever in Japan. I'm not talking about any other country again. <laughs> <laughs> so, but lastly, fourth, most importantly, people like each other. In recent polls, 80% of Americans think Jap Japan is a critical partner. 80% of uh, Japanese thinks Americans are the most likable people. There's not too many relations like this in the world. E economically important, security-wise related, value shared, and people like each other. So in that sense, I think we have very special relations. And uh, uh, I think uh, I've always been saying that in order to maintain these relations, three no's are important. No surprise between two countries. In ordinary human relations, there could be surprise and pleasant surprise, n not between countries. You have to inform each other of your intention. Second, no over-politicization. Those issues that could be solved should be solved rather discreetly. It's not easy, eh, but try to do so. Third, no take for granted. After 50 years of marriage, I don't know if there are any people who have done 50 years already here, but uh, it d doesn't look like it. But, uh, but you tend to uh, take each other for granted. You think you're doing bit more for the other. And uh, that is the most dangerous uh, psychology we have to avoid. So uh, no take for granted is the word. I think uh, I would uh, like uh, to stop here and uh, try to invite uh, uh, question and answers, uh, 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 questions and, uh, it's not to uh, invite questions. I still have about uh, 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 25 minutes or so. Uh, I can't give it to all of you, but uh, th those uh, who have uh, uh, given question, uh, asked questions, uh, please uh, share this amongst you. I'll give, just leave one coin that I've designed myself, uh, so up on this, uh, over there, so uh, please do take it. Uh, so I'm open for any question. But uh, just in order to get it, uh, don't ask uh, what, what breakfast did I get t today or something like that. <laughs> Uh, if you have a question, uh, I'll call on you, but then if, would you please stand and, and say it, uh, say your question loudly enough so that everyone can hear it. Please identify yourself. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, I'm Harry Barr, Dr. Barr. I'm the visiting from Temple University. I'm a specialist in radiology and nuclear medicine. And I'm interested in two questions, really. If yes, sir. If you were to permit. One, your success with nuclear energy, which we admire. Uh, we have heard of no problems, and obviously you're ongoing with this, and we need, obviously, to follow your example and that of France. My second question uh, relates to our relationship with the military. Uh, 
how would your government, and feel free not to answer this question if it's uh, impolite, feel about withdrawing our, more of our troops and uh, support personnel from Japan? As you know, we are rather stretched at the moment. Uh, thank you very, thank you very much, sir. Uh, uh, two issues about nuclear. Uh, I hesitate to answer to nuclear specialists on these uh, issues, uh, but uh, what I know is that, as I told you, Japan has been uh, continuing a nuclear power uh, plant uh, for last 30 years, and uh, now two big companies, uh, Hitachi, and uh, is, has a special re relations with GE. Toshiba has with uh, Westinghouse, and uh, they are really into this and uh, would like to, uh, if the United States is starting this nuclear power, I think the president has already announced that uh, government will uh, give uh, uh, backing and we are ready to engage in uh, uh, cooperating with the United States. Uh, one, I I think the uh, reason maybe uh, behind is that it's, it's country like Japan, as I have said, is very, has limited natural resources. We have to go to nuclear. So we have had accidents, that is true, and people are very wary of any accident too. So there's a huge scandal arises when any uh, accident happens. Because uh, with uh, a nuclear bomb, Japan, uh, Japanese is very much uh, conscious of nuclear damage. And uh, uh, however, there's a notion that we have to go to nuclear. And now, it, about 30% of uh, Japanese electricity is nuclear. And if something happens, uh, we'll try to mend it. But we just not cannot afford to stop it like this country. So that's, I think, the <coughs> difference. As for uh, uh, military, uh, US has about 40,000 uh, troops in Japan. And the original plan is, uh, was to take out about 8,000 to Guam and uh, relocate some of the bases. Now, this uh, relocation of basing issue uh, has been uh, reviewed by new government which came in in last September. And uh, uh, it's uh, true that uh, relocation is not easy because Japan is a small country and uh, uh, people are wary if uh, base comes uh, t uh, to the, uh, their vicinity because uh, unlike s some American scholars said uh, U.S. bases like an oxygen, and, uh, like oxygen, and uh, it's something indispensable. It is indispensable, but uh, it's not like oxygen. It's, uh, oxygen doesn't smell, it does, uh, no noise, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, troops are there for that reason. So, uh, uh, and some accidents uh, happen from time to time, and so this is a very delicate issue. Uh, but it is the view of the Japanese government, the present government as well, to have U.S. presence in Japan. But how many, uh, where is uh, now being discussed? And uh, But basically, I think, uh, in view of the geographical uh, situation of Japan, North Korea there, China, continuing to build up its military for the last 20 years by more than 10% a year. We need US presence. And that is the sort of tacit understanding of almost all the Asian countries. They want US to be there in the Pacific, not, all, not only in Hawaii and Guam, but in East Asia, like Japan. Thank you. I'm Brandon Harris, I'm a senior here. Um, with the recent troubles with Toyota, have you seen any political um, uh, tensions or has it ushered in new talks of regulations and quality assurance um, uh, regulations between the two countries? Uh, when Toyota happened,
happened, they called the uh, Secretary Lafoud, he's the uh, Secretary of Transportation, and said uh, three things. One, uh, Japan puts uh, safety as a top issue in auto manufacturing. Second, Toyota is telling us, the Japanese government, that it's their view as well, and they will do everything necessary to uh, have the uh, confidence of the Americans and Japanese and other people. Third, I presume, I understand that US government will uh, continue to take appropriate attitude. Uh, and I think I'm convinced that uh, the US has been doing so not to make this a country-to-country -country issue. It's a private company's issue. And companies tr uh, try to do as much as possible. And so we believe that uh, uh, we would let uh, the company to cope with this issue and try to not to make this a, a governmental issue. And, uh, but uh, uh, we hope uh, they will come out uh, soon. As for regulations or things, uh, I don't think there's uh, what uh, uh, there's any negotiation going on or discussion going on to change something like that at this juncture. Thank you. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Dan Howald. I'm a sophomore. Um, you mentioned base relocation yeah. in regards to the government change up. Um, I, as I understand it, the um, Fatenma in particular was already under discussion to be relocated prior to the yes. governmental changeover. Right. Now, obviously, every new cabinet pursues its own agendas, but at the same time, if an agreement is struck between two governments, I mean, does that get resolved just because of a new changeover, or what's the deal? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, is, is this on the record? <laughs> uh, good question. And then... Uh, as a cautious diplomat, I would put it this way. Some people in Japan would say, yes, uh, deal struck should be revered between any two governments. However, let's take a look at some other incidents. United States agree to deploy missile defense in Czechoslovakia, Poland, uh, in the previous government. And then, if uh, my recollection is wrong, uh, not wrong, they just uh, changed the policy. And uh, the other government was rather struck, but uh, they accepted it. So things like that would happen. Uh, from time to time. It should not happen that much, but uh, is according to some of my friends. <laughs> and uh, what's important is this process. As I said, it should, there should be no surprise, no over-politicization, no take for granted, and that process between allies should be very smooth. And that is exactly what we have to do. If, if we have to review something that has been struck, we ha must do it, but we have to do it with understanding on both sides. Because security relations is, after all, psychological relations. You are trying to uh, sacrifice the lives of people by defending other country. So if you are not really have affection, you do not have trust, all the relations would just evaporate, devastate it. So you have to uh, have the, cannot really uh, shake the credibility of the commitment agreement. And that is what we are tr muddling through now. You talked about the um, amount that Japan has given reconstruction for Afghanistan yeah. and Pakistan. But um, I know the Bush administration.
administration, it was always a sticking point that Japan didn't send more concrete troops, uh, actual troops uh, to help. And under the uh, new government, uh, Prime Minister Hatoyama has said, you know, he wants to move towards a more UN-based rather than uh, sticking straight with U.S. policy, uh, U.S. foreign policy. So do you see, like, the uh, Japan's reluctance to um, send actual troops to be a uh, major sticking point in the future, or do you think uh, in the uh, last uh, Japanese uh, administration of government, uh, Japan sent uh, ground forces to Iraq, and uh, air, our air self-defense uh, forces, uh, plane and uh, the crews, uh, to fly between Kuwait and Iraq. But uh, uh, this was started during uh, Prime Minister Koizumi, and it was terminated under Prime Minister Koizumi. And uh, what uh, was continuing was refueling ships in Indian Ocean, those sh naval ships who are engaging in Operation Enduring Freedom, the Counterterrorism Act. But the uh, new government of Japan stopped this. Uh, and said, we are not refueling anymore, but we will instead increase our support to Afghanistan uh, by this uh, $5 billion. So if I may say, this uh, ground force or air force was terminated already three or four years ago. The only thing that was stopped under the new government was this uh, uh, refueling. And uh, some people uh, think that in Japan, for refilling which should be continued, but uh, the government, supported by people, thought uh, we have done uh, uh, what we have uh, should be doing, and uh, we would put more emphasis on uh, uh, this uh, civilian uh, side. And uh, the big, biggest one is uh, here, for example, uh, salary of uh, 96,000 Afghan police officers are borne by. Uh, Japan. It's about half uh, the salary is borne by Japan, and we think those kind of security could be a little bit more effective. That was the uh, new government's thinking. Well, hi, I'm Will Kavanaugh. I'm a freshman here. Um, how have U.S.-Japan trade relations been affected by the deflation of the Japanese national economy? Uh, Japanese economy is in was uh, in stalemate in the 1990s. It began to pick up with the turn of the century, and uh, uh, it was on a growth path. But uh, 2008 financial shock started in the United States, gave a big blow to Japan. Although our financial sector were, was quite sound, it was the biggest blow that Japan ever had experienced. Our GDP went down by 5%, and uh, that's the lowest since 1956, more than 50 years. Our manufacture has gone down by 22% in 2009. Our export has gone down by 33% in just one year. The reason is rather clear, because 17% uh, of our manufacturing was automobile and other transportation related. 18% was electronics and electric uh, appliances. <coughs> Those are the things you can wait to buy. You don't have to buy right now if you're in trouble. Who do you have to eat? Walmart, well, Walmart is a good company, but still, they sell uh, cheap things. And the Chinese product, they can buy it uh, with uh, a decreased allowance. Cars or uh, uh, DVDs, you can wait to buy. And that's the reason Japan's economy was hard hit. And uh, uh, one of the 
reason was also was that in since uh, this uh, financial shock, if you look at currency, EU was down five percent compared to U.S. dollar. Chinese renminbi is about the same, pegging U.S. Japanese yen was appreciated by 15%. And that gave a big blow to Japanese uh, trade. And uh, uh, that is the effect that Japan is experiencing. Now, the new government of Japan is trying to boost domestic economy to not depending too much on export. But, uh, this uh, try to uh, help household, small and medium industry, agricultural uh, farm, and try to. Uh, but uh, this is very difficult as well because uh, it means that we have to spend more. We have a huge budgetary deficit. Uh, in this uh, financial year of 2010, we are spending more than double of uh, our. Uh, tax income. And Japanese uh, uh, governmental debt is 180% of GDP, which is by far the number one. US is about 100%. So we, our economy is facing difficulty now, and we are really struggling. We have time for one more question. Yes. I can take three. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I regret it. <laughs> sophomore here at Villanova University, and my question regards to high-speed rail, just out of curiosity. Um, we all know um, we have the cell here. It's not really much of a high-speed kind of network. It relies on Amtrak, our national, nationalized um, railway system. Now, you mentioned Japan has interest in um, investing in the United States with high-speed rail, along with France, Germany, UK, and China. Um, how exactly do you see this happening? Do you see um, going Okay. Thank you. Can I take two more right yes, right now and? Uh, and Malwa, I think you uh, want to ask you. Uh, sure. Um, then I have the question there. To part of my question is here. Uh, my question is uh, direct to 50 years of the ban of the U.S. relations and particular security arrangement. So yeah, it seems like it's working well. When U.S. is going to, to, to Iraq, Japan is also going. You mentioned about the uh, Indian Ocean. I guess U.S. tried to, to deal with Somalia pirate. Was that the case uh, whereby Japan was going to? Uh, these are two good examples. And also, uh, the construction. Japan is also working well with the U.S. Uh, my question is that. Are uh, there are some incidents whereby uh, Japan can act by itself, or is it just like going after the US after the US? Okay. And then, and then one more Satya. Mr. Masters, this is Satya Patnai from Sociology and Political Science. I was wondering if you would um, speak uh, a little bit about the Japanese perception of North Korea. And in the event that in the next 20 years, if both Koreas came together, what would that do to this perception of the threat? Uh, do you have a question as well? Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, Bill Jolomograd here. Uh, does, does Japan follow the United States with sanctions and bad relations with Myanmar, or does Japan have a different type of relationship with Myanmar than the United States? Okay, thank you very much. Very good questions. Uh, High-speed railway, uh, it has not been decided. Uh, I think it's the government, the federal government has uh, designated several areas, and it's a local authority who's going to determine what kind of railway they would choose. Japan has several companies, a high-speed railway company. It was just one company, but 
they separated into, uh, divided into several companies and they are competing with each other. Some of the uh, high-speed railways of Japan is a, uh, designed only for high-speed railways. So, some are using the existing lines and uh, there, there are some different kinds of high-speed railway in Japan. And, uh, unlike France, which is just one, uh, we uh, uh, don't know how uh, those uh, companies will be chosen, but uh, these uh, several companies all are interested, and uh, they had seminars in Washington, and I think they are trying to work on to uh, these local entities. Point two, about Japan-U.S. Uh, security relations. One thing important for you to know is that uh, right after the World War II, uh, MacArthur uh, uh, headquarters have uh, uh, drawn up a constitution and, uh, for Japan. Uh, uh, Japanese government uh, parliament has passed it, uh, in which uh, Japan was prohibited to have a uh, military force and to fight outside of the country. It was originally uh, American design, but after all, Japanese liked it. And Japanese have uh, been uh, adhering to that for the last 60 years. And if so, even if you go to Iraq, they are supplying water and not fighting. And uh, I think uh, that will remain so. We are sending, for example, ships to Somalia, and uh, we have done these logistic support, but this, I think, will not, uh, uh, the fundamental will not change. Thirdly, about North Korea, uh, three things are important. To tackle with the uh, nuclear issue, tackle with missile issue, and tackle with human rights, especially kidnapping issue. We think uh, all three has to be uh, deal, dealt with uh, co comprehensively, and for that, six-party talks is the good organization. As for 20 years from now, if North two Koreas get together, it depends on how it will be done. If North Korea uh, conquers South. I ho hope that will not happen. It's not going to be a very good for security, but if North Korea changes and becomes unhappy uh, to country or just one country, then uh, it may be very good for the region as well. So it's rather difficult to say one country. Uh, uh, lastly, uh, on Myanmar, yes, we have been uh, taking quite a uh, firm attitude towards uh, Myanmar. But uh, sometimes uh, and we are only giving a humanitarian assistance and not economic aid to Myanmar. But in dealing with these countries, Myanmar or Iran, the difficulty is that there are so many countries who can help them and who likes to help them. If we don't, for example, take example of uh, Iran. We had an oil field, we had, which was called Azadegan. So we had 75% share of that oil field. Because uh, uh, we wanted to send a message to Iranians that uh, we are not cooperating with them, our share went down to 10%. It's not voluntarily. It was uh, 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 government-led. And after that, one country, a big country near us, has got 90% of that. So uh, in Myanmar as well, we have to be very careful how to deal with these issues. But we think uh, it's very important. And our uh, foreign minister has uh, told the uh, Myanmar government that uh, if there's going to be an election soon, they have to really release uh, Aung San Suu Kyi and uh, other leaders. If not, we, the international community cannot admit that as the uh, legal, uh, legitimate uh, election. And we have been sending this message very clearly. Thank you very much.